Welcome to Charting the Markets on this uh, March the 6th as we continue to monitor what's been an interesting market where people still seem to be wanting to look at risk in some areas of the market. We've got a lot of uh, focus on what interest rates are going to be doing around the world in terms of some of the central bank uh, decisions over the next few months. Uh, but let's uh, kick off first of all though with our guest and uh, introduce uh, Serge Berger, our regular um, early monthly guest uh, on Chart in the Market. Serge, welcome. Uh, from the thesteadytrader.com, uh, we've been talking about where to start off this discussion. I guess the right place is to take a look at what's been happening with gold uh, with the recent record highs that we've got. Precious metals in part have been an interesting uh, debating topic over the last uh, few weeks or so, but gold has taken the prize because it's just risen to a new record high. Let's ask you the outright question. Uh, how do we trade this given the environment and, and what do you think is behind the move that we've seen? Hey, Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, I tell you the the, the move in gold here and I'm just I'm using the GLD ETF. It's a uh, one. Uh, it's it's divided by 10 on, on the CFD on, on the IG platform. Um, it's probably one of the more exciting moves I've seen in, in, in a long time because um, the technicals match up. That's one thing. But also, you know, if you think about what's the driver for this, I mean, there's some of it might be the bit the driving Bitcoin. Maybe we're as we're heading into more the political season now, um, you know, maybe there's a focus on, on that. Um, but I think it's quite uh, interesting what we're seeing here. So the GLD or gold. It's it's having a pretty significant breakout, and if you if you follow technicals and you follow kind of how algorithms work, um, you know this is like the sixth try on a weekly time frame. The daily time frame is even more uh, convincing to to break higher here, and and it could be significant. You know, uh, it once once it gets going, we we could see we could see a significant move. I mean, the time frame is always a question, but ultimately, I wouldn't be surprised if we see two fifty on GLD. Or I believe that's about twenty five dollars on on the CFD on on IG. So that's what's going on in GLD. It, it it's it's choppy, so it's it's always difficult. I find it a very difficult asset to trade. Um, but I think taking a position here in this, um, you know, it does make sense from 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 all the, the reasons I just mentioned. Yeah, let's let's ask you the question about what's happening then with silver, because as I say, it's it's always um, looked at as another precious metal when you get this moving gold sometimes it surprises people that silver hasn't moved up by as much it has seen an appreciation but uh, it's only at uh, recent highs not uh, not record highs no it's not and actually this is really interesting and i just had a chat with some of our clients about this yesterday when you have a significant move in gold and 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 i think this move still has to prove itself a bit further silver not only tends to to participate it actually tends to uh, it tends to actually outperform so if we we take silver here and I'll just quickly make this line charts and we um we overlay uh, gold on it. You can see that gold's already made that move. Gold is aptly in orange and silver is still, you know, working on that breakout. So not only should silver follow, it ultimately should actually outperform. Part part of that is because it's a more volatile asset. So silver to to me, very primed for a move. Timing is always difficult on this stuff, but uh but gold's get leading the way here. Yeah. Uh, one of the ways, as you say, is to trade the um, asset class itself. The other way to trade it, of course, is to look for uh, areas of the market where there might be some extra leverage to be had with uh, earnings coming out from individual mining companies. Um, how important is it to keep an eye on miners generally when looking at this rise in gold? Well, I mean, miners in many ways are just a more levered way of of of, of playing this this whole this whole move. Right. It's it's all it is. It's 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 levered. It's volatile. And so I always try to warn people of the the volatility of this. The blue line here is the gold miners. I'm using the GDX ETF for that. That represents gold miners. I think gold miners are really, again, it's a derivative of gold. So if one wants to lever a bet, then GDX. Uh, what's important is that gold's making a move. That's really the, the fundamental driver for, for the moves in gold miners. Yeah. 
Um, let's uh, let's switch the focus back onto some of the other topics we've spoken about before. Um, I noticed actually yesterday uh, we saw some of the biggest declines on Wall Street coming through for tech stocks, particularly uh, those um, uh, that have made the most gains recently. And of course, we've been talking a lot about what's been happening with semiconductor uh, stocks. I noticed actually with interest amongst the magnificent seven that uh, fell yesterday. In fact, Nvidia was the outstanding performer on the upside. This semiconductor stock has really stolen the headlines on the upside. Doesn't seem to have any ceiling on it at the moment. Um, how should we trade uh, semiconductor stocks in this tech space? Yeah, I mean, momentum begets more momentum, right? That's the game. Um, I just put something on the YouTube short this morning. I, I, I think, uh, I think Nvidia. Listen, if they, if they're gonna, if they're gonna go for round numbers, and uh, excuse me, at this point, I'm not quite sure. It's even much about fundamentals anymore. It's, it's momentum, right? It's a momentum game, and if you think about ETFs that allocate money to this, you know, they're indiscriminate buyers. Um, you know, does NVIDIA go to 900 or 1,000? It's entirely possible. 900 is about 5% from here. 1,000 is about 15, 16% from here. I will say though, and this hasn't mattered yet, but if you want to be very technical about it and, and it's, it, you know, begs to be cautious about this, but the candlestick formation over the past couple of days where we had an exhaustion candle followed by, you know, this other kind of candle yesterday, can lead to to potential top forming so just something to watch out for but i would not at all be surprised if you see 900 or a thousand so i think critical levels here but more importantly i think a mag seven i think it's mags is a is an etf for that mags i mean they're definitely getting stretched and i would not be surprised if we're seeing rotation into other parts of the market like biotech uh from from a momentum perspective that uh you know that makes sense because it's still a momentum market and um, it's probably more about rotation at this point. Yeah. OK, so, so so far we've been talking about things that are readily available to everybody in the market. I want to uh, dwell on a subject which I know um, is uh, a sensitive topic because it uh, has been the subject of a warning from a number of regulators, the Bitcoin, um, because of the, the wild gyrations in this market. Bitcoin is not available to trade directly for a lot of traders. But I do want to highlight what's going on in the Bitcoin market. And those that can't trade because they might not have the qualification to trade Bitcoin, there are other proxies to trade this market, such as the exchange trade. Uh, funds that, that have come up recently and also ways in which you can engage with companies that are proxies like Coinbase, for example. But I do want to focus, if I can, uh, um, with you, uh, Serge, on the Bitcoin move that we've seen. Um, and, and in your mind, what is behind this rise to these new record highs? Yeah. L let's start off with, if you don't mind, with the, with the longer term logarithmic monthly chart. And here you can see it's 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 an asset a that's volatile, but also it has a steady upward movement. And you know, there's a couple things that I I increasingly believe that 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 are driving this. I mean, in the very near term, we're seeing the ETF inflows. I mean, the I think the BlackRock ETF IBIT is now something like ten billion dollars in like five or six weeks. In AUM, I think it's the fastest growing ETF ever. Um, and it's because a lot of investment advisors. I myself have an investment advisory firm in the US and you know we're we're now allocating to these ETFs. So that's the big driver. And, and again, like I said before, these are indiscriminate buyers. So an ETF does not care what the price is, the price of Bitcoin, the price of anything. So it'll it can push it up to whatever level. And there's more and more investment advisor in the United States, RIAs, that are <clears throat> still coming on board and approving internally that it's now okay to buy the, the these ETFs. Um the other thing that I think is a really interesting here is the belief system. When I talk to uh, you know my generation or and younger generations, there is a an unbelievable belief system in this um, in, in 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 Bitcoin, and and that I think is something we should not underestimate. So you know, ultimately, if we just from a technical perspective on this chart, if we start moving higher out of this next base, you know, next stop is uh, you know two hundred. Uh, 250, 260,000. Now, again, that could take time. That will take time, uh, most likely. Um, but there, there is that, there is that potential of an outside shot to, to, you know, because of the indiscriminate buying uh, of ETFs that we go there quicker than than people think, at least for a trade. So, um, talking about. Um... Uh, some of the um, uh, momentum trades in this and uh, looking at that potential upside that we've got. 
Um, there is a halving coming for Bitcoin. Is that significant as well to add to the upside? Or does this have a, uh, an opposite effect? Or where, how would you trade the halving? It, it's an interesting question that we've been we've been pondering for the past few months. And I, I, I think the bigger catalyst was the ETFs because it, it, it gave sort of like a government blessing of not of Bitcoin itself, but of, 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 of the ETFs at least. The halving is interesting. We're actually just the other day made a, a new all time high before having the having, I think is set to place 20th of April or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we're going to go from 900 BTC to about 450 Bitcoin a day or something like that. Um, and that's now with an, an entire new asset class being blessed again by 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 the, the government basically, and an entire generation, the baby boomers, which still have all the money, um, now basically, you know, or at least some of them piling into this. I think the having is important, but I think, and that's again, it just takes a lot of supply off of or new supply off off the uh, uh, off the table. But I, I do think the ETF uh, is a bigger driver of price here at this point. Yeah. Okay, so right. look, thanks indeed for joining us uh, for this first Wednesday of the month. It's been a pleasure catching up with you. Some of those record highs we've seen in some of those markets. That's Serge Berger from thesteadytrader.com. You can catch up more with Serge on his uh, website. That's it for today's Chart in the Markets. Mm -hmm.